so my name is Chinwe Onyagoro, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about time. Uh, not the kind that goes tick-tock, uh, but the kind that really is talking about inefficient market entrepreneurs. The first thing to note um, about inefficient markets, um, it's kind of like pornography, right? You can't really define it, but you know when you've experienced it, right? Inefficient markets, right? You don't know what that was, but you know it was a waste of time and energy and resources, right? So inefficient markets are really tough. And the big reason why they're tough is not just because of the waste, but because of all of the unrealized potential. How many times have you looked on and said, you know what, I'm not even going to try to do that. It's going to take two hours. I don't even know if I'm going to come out on the other end of it. So you don't even bother, right? So customers self-selecting themselves out of marketplaces because of inefficiency. Now that's a shame. So we're going to talk a little bit about why inefficient markets are important. We're going to talk about how I'm connected in inefficient markets, right? Don't I have anything better to do? Um, we're going to talk about inefficient market entrepreneurs and where to find them. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how you can get involved and uh, what kind of things inefficient markets have in store for you. Um, so for those that are of the show me, don't tell me uh, variety, I'm going to give you three examples of inefficient markets that I'm sure you've each experienced, right? Uh, so the first example um, is the example of someone who's just going to get a license or a permit approved, right? Just a basic task, uh, but you go in and you can't find the right form, you can't find the right person, you don't know the secret password, and you really have to, you, you sort of go through the runaround, right? It's, this is a huge inefficient market effect that's really problematic. Uh, the next is anybody who's had a nurse or a, 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 an experience with a doctor, uh, and you go in and you just need some help, right? But you have to start off filling out a form you're sure you filled out before, talking about a family history or experience that you know you've consulted with someone about, and you can't get the help you need. Uh, this is what we call the do and the redo, right? It's duplicative, you're stuck. Uh, the last is, you know, I'm sure we've all experienced this. The last is your TV conks out, you call, you know, a, a, a famed, you know, cable company, and you ask for some help, right? You ask for some help, you've got, you've got things to do, you have no way of knowing when they're going to show up, right? But sometime between today and next month, right? And you can't really do any planning, and you can't make any forward momentum, right? That's the waiting game. These are all examples of inefficient markets, and we've all been victim to them. So, what's a girl like me doing caring about a thing like this? Um, so, it started really early. I'm the last of seven of an immigrant family from Nigeria. It's in West Africa, it's one of the largest economies in Africa. And I'm the only one who was born in America. And my parents were really lucky to study here in the US, and they have between 14 and 18 brothers and sisters between them who didn't get to come here. Uh, but these are folks who are doing pretty well, right? They're teachers, they're lawyers, they're engineers. Uh, but when we were here and I was growing up, at the age of nine, I started receiving letters from cousins, right, who would ask me for bubble gum, they'd ask me to send them blue jeans. As I got older, they would ask me to help them come to the U.S. And I was wondering, why is it that, you know, they're not able to get everything they need in, those, in that country? So I talked to my mom, who's a nurse and really is not an expert in this area, and all she could tell me is, the economy really doesn't work for them. And that's all she needed to say. So being the naive, really idealistic child that I was, I really set out to really learn more about how do markets work and how do you get them to work better for the people that live in them. So I started out um, studying um, the four tigers, right? I started learning about Singapore and Hong Kong and South Korea because at the time, their economies were growing gangbusters. They were making investments, the governments were really helping support and nurture industries, and I was trying to figure out, wow, these are countries with virtually no natural resources, and they're growing faster than my country in Nigeria. Um, so that was really interesting to me. Uh, the other thing I did is I joined a management consulting firm, 
and there they were really coaching and advising large companies that were operating in really big changing marketplaces. And so we were really advising them on how do you compete, how do you continue to have advantage, and how do you continue to maintain your market share. So from a microeconomic perspective, I was learning about how the marketplace works. Uh, and then lastly, I jumped out there and became an entrepreneur. And I took the macroeconomic stuff I had learned from the Four Tigers, I took the stuff I had learned from my McKinsey experience, and I really focused and targeted it in figuring out how do you attract investment to low-income communities, communities that have lots and lots of assets, but sometimes are overlooked. And I raised lots of dollars to really focus on creating jobs, helping to revitalize real estate, and then helping to support and grow small businesses. And that's how my inefficient market story starts. So I stumble into the small business marketplace in doing this work. And this is where I've stayed for a while, because I saw some things that just didn't feel right, right. So let me tell you a little bit about the small business marketplace. So 99.5% of all businesses are small. Right? These are businesses that contribute so much to our economy, and yet they're really challenged by something that we would think is pretty basic, right? raising money so that they can operate and grow. These businesses, seven out of 10 of them get rejected for loans. Seven out of 10 of them get rejected for loans that they need to make payroll, to pay for lease, to keep their lights on. And that, for me, was a problem. Why are such an important constituency in our economy, why are they shut out of the capital marketplace? So I started doing a little digging. And it comes to show that this actually has been a problem for a very long time. Over the last five years, the actual value in terms of dollars that have gone to invest in small businesses has dropped by like 44%. This is tens of billions of dollars in debt financing that typically goes towards making payroll and doing all the great stuff that keep our communities alive and well has vanished, right? It's eviscerated. So it's always been a problem, but this huge precipitous drop really has caught the attention and the hearts and minds of a lot of folks, including myself. So a couple other facts about the financing market. This is a huge market. It's a trillion dollar market, right? I can't even count the zeros, right? And 92% of this market are banks and non-bank lenders. This is all debt, right? So 8% of it is equity and grants, but 92% is debt. And there's so many different types of debt capital out there. But the typical business really knows about credit cards, they know about their local bank, they don't know about all the other kinds of debt that's out there. And they don't know that there are tens of thousands of funders and hundreds of thousands of funding professionals that on a day-to-day -day basis are set up to provide debt. So what's the problem? Why is it that there's so much diversity in financing and yet there's, the rejection rates are so high? So when you look at it, regardless of the type of financing, the rejection rates are really high for businesses that generate a million dollars and less. That's 60% of all small business employer firms. That's, that's the ball game, that's everyone. When you look at businesses that generate between one and five million, that's another 33% of businesses, the rejection rates are between 40 and 50%. So who's getting the money? Who's getting that trillion dollars if all the rejection rates are so high? Well, when you start to creep up the ladder, no surprise, Businesses that generate 25 million in revenues and above, guess what their rejection rate is? 2%, right? So 2% rejection rate for businesses that generate 25 million and above. So what's, what's going on there? Are, they, are those just much healthier businesses? Are they just doing all the right things and everyone else is just falling down? Um, Definitely not, right? So those are businesses, <laughs> we've all seen it, right? So those are businesses that the banks like to compete for their business. They have huge deposits. You can do a lot with $25 million in money. You can earn savings interest on it. You can loan it back out. So banks will actively compete for that money. But what does everyone else do, right? What is everyone else doing wrong? Is it that they're going through the wrong doors, they're talking to the wrong lenders? Is it that they just ha are not qualified at all? Are the lenders just being mean? Is that it? Is it just mean lenders are really locking up this market? You know, unfortunately, I'm here to give a talk on small business financing and try to raise awareness and educate, but there are honestly not a whole lot of really good answers. This is the most understudied marketplace in history. 
So what I can tell you is there's a huge knowledge gap. On a scale of zero to four, Pepperdine School of Business did uh, research across the country, and they found that the average small business that has five million in revenue and under is under two in terms of their knowledge of capital. That means their capital options, that means what they're being judged against, that means who they go to to get this capital, under two. That's 93% of all small businesses have no clue how to raise capital. Is this just a, a, a woefully, um, just ignorant marketplace? The small businesses just have, they don't get it? They just don't understand? I think the answer is no. Right? This is a systematically inefficient marketplace that has limited understanding and knowledge um, that we're looking to really break wide open and are looking to engage you in that process. So let me tell you a little bit about inefficient markets. The first characteristic of an inefficient market is that it's not transparent, right? You cannot see, there's no two-way mirror here. You can't see what's going on. On the one hand, small businesses want capital. On the other hand, lenders have capital, but lenders don't share their criteria with the small businesses. You have no way of knowing what they're looking for, why you didn't get it. There's no interchange. How do I get a deal done in a marketplace where I don't know what the rules are, where I don't know how to play the game? Right? So that's a, a real challenge, transparency and asymmetry of information. The other challenge is silos, right? Everyone's doing their own thing. Remember that chart about the 20 different types of financing options and the tens of thousands of different funders? They're all operating in their own silos, right? So how many of you have gone to a national bank and have applied for a loan? When you get that rejection letter, does it say, hey, here are three other lenders you should go to that might give you some money, right? No, right? They're not set up to do that. It's absolutely you don't fit into our box and can't help you. They're all out there. There's no coordination, no integration, so you can figure out where's the right way to go. And there's so many cool lenders out there, right? So you have the big guys, you've got the Bank of America, the JP Morgan, the Citibank, but then you've got a whole lot of other specialty lenders. You have Axion, which is a micro lending institution. You have a group called Cabbage that's funding just e-commerce businesses. So many new financing providers that are emerging, but they're all showing up and carving out just their lane. And if you don't fall into their lane, too bad, right? So there's silos, and that really creates challenges for small businesses. And the last aspect of an inefficient market is fragmentation, right? For those of you that have gone through the university process, there's no common app, right? There's no one package that you can just fill out, send it in, and all the lenders will take a look, and you can just figure it out. You have to fill out that application and put together your package over and over and over again. And they're all asking for pretty much the same information. Right? So you have to spend all that time and energy with no certainty as to where you're going to come out on the other end. Inefficient marketplace. Right? So the small business financing market is highly inefficient. But it's not alone. There's lots of inefficient marketplaces in our society. Right? So when you look at the healthcare marketplace, right? there's lots of change happening in the healthcare industry. Everything from what are we doing with storing and inventorying all of our equipment and supplies and being efficient about not wasting resources, to what are we doing about recording, tracking, and transferring patient information so it's accessible wherever you are. That's inefficiencies that are try folks are trying to root out in the healthcare market. And government, where do we begin with government, right? So much inefficiency, right? So, you know, accountability systems that don't exist to help drive performance. So many jurisdictions where everyone has a different uh, set of decision-making power so you can never affect large-scale change, right? Lots of inefficiencies and then lots and lots of data that's just sitting there, not being mined and put back out there to share with the public so we can solve big, big problems. So lots of inefficient marketplaces and we could go on and on. So are there any efficient marketplaces? Are we, should we just all lay down and die? Or, or what, what can we do? What can we do to fix this problem? Now, I know you're all going to be a little skeptical here in the, in the wake of the, the economic downturn, but believe it or not, the stock market is actually a pretty efficient marketplace. This is a marketplace where businesses raise capital, and it actually has all of the components of an efficient marketplace. Doesn't always operate optimally, doesn't always function well, has huge loopholes that bad actors walk right through, right? Enron, Bernie Madoff, what have you, right? There's lots of, there's lots of problems in the marketplace for the stock market, but it actually is set up as an efficient marketplace. On the one hand, you have buyers. 
You have folks who, anyone from stay-at-home moms to students with a little bit of free time to do day trading to professional traders. Any one of those folks can go into the marketplace, get relevant information about companies that they want to learn about, whether they're watching Susie Orman or they're pulling a 10K, and they can place a trade, whether it's through E-Trade or clearing it through you know, an intermediary like Goldman Sachs. At the end of the day, there's a perfect clearing function for buyers and sellers to do business. And that actually is a well-working capital market. And to add to it, you have SEC. Their sole purpose is to address information asymmetries, right? Because they realize information asymmetries creates inefficient marketplaces. So they are focused on rooting that out in the stock market. Right? So the problem with this marketplace is, guess how many companies really benefit from it in terms of being able to raise capital through it? 5,000 companies, right? That's 0.01% of all small businesses. What's everyone else supposed to do, right? This is an e efficient market for just such a limited few folks. That, that's not right, right? So those same folks, 98% approval rate in terms of loans. Small businesses, 70% rejection rate. And only 1% of small businesses, less than 1% of small businesses, are able to raise equity capital from angels and VCs. So really woefully challenging marketplace. So what do we do? If we do nothing, right? You've seen it during the economic downturn. Hundreds of thousands of small businesses closed their doors. And these small businesses, they're not islands, right? They reach into neighborhoods, that reach into cities, that reach into states and regions and the US economy at large. And what ends up happening is first job loss, then foreclosure, and then the, the domino effect, right? Everything, city services, crime, quality of life, schools, everything, right? So it's not really an option for us to do nothing, right? It's not really an option. So, where do we take our lessons? Like, where can we learn from other folks who are doing efficient market stuff, right? So, I met my husband on Match.com, so I'm a real <laughs> efficient market entrepreneur, right? So, so I, I'm a real believer in there are lots of inefficient marketplaces, and let's solve them and let's use them, right? So, nationally, there are folks that are starting open data movements that are focused on getting government data out into the public so we can start to solve real problems, right? You've got Uber and Lyft, I live by them. Right? That's how I got here today. Right? So there's, there's huge, huge efficiencies that's saving us time, money, and energy. And Chicago, I've got to be honest, Chicago is really kicking up the steam in terms of the set of inefficient market entrepreneurs that are here. Grubhub, right, coming out and really helping us, you know, at the, at, the, at the end of the night, find the right food, right? So there's lots and lots of inefficient market entrepreneurs, even in the, the Chicago area, and it's really growing rapidly. And the lessons we can learn from them are huge. So, what do we do in the small business marketplace? So, in the small business financing marketplace, um, there's lots to do, right? We've got to address the information asymmetries, we've got to break down the silos and create coordination and integration, right? And then we've got to address the fragmentation. And if we do it, if we do it right, right, we will increase loan approval rates, right? More money in the hands of small businesses. By the way, of the 27 million small businesses, 21 million are sole proprietors. These are people who, but for their ingenuity and entrepreneurship, would not have right job and work, right? So this is so, so critical to solving. We will decrease and shorten capital raising time so you don't have to waste so much time and energy. You'll get it quicker. And in the end, we're going to strengthen communities. We're going to create many, many, many more jobs. So what connects me to this marketplace? Um, so a year ago, I spun out a technology firm that's called Funwell. And we call ourselves, lovingly, uh, the match.com for small business financing. <laughs> so we connect small businesses to lenders, and we do it really efficiently and save them lots of time. Last year, we served about 3,000 small businesses. And what really excites me is, 80% of those businesses were women and minority-owned businesses, right? These are folks who have even more trouble, right? Even more trouble. Thank you. Even more trouble raising capital, and even when they're able to raise the capital, it's usually less than they actually need. So this is really an inefficient market problem that's affecting everyone, and not necessarily proportionally. And this year, we partnered with the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago and of San Francisco, and we're doing, essentially, building a set of tools that are really going to help the marketplace of small businesses better understand their financial health, and also then better understand their credit options. So stay tuned for that. So we're really excited about the kind of change that are happening in the small business financing market.
place. So what's the so what for you, right? So what, what's in it for you? I mean, I'm hoping I've convinced you that inefficient marketplaces are everywhere, right? I'm hoping I've convinced you of that. So really, my plea to you is, you got a couple of options, right? You got to become one, right? Join us, right? You got to come out there. I'm sure you've experienced it where you're like, that's really frustrating. That needs to change. Get up and let's change it together. The other thing you can do is invest in one, right? We've got crowdfunding. We've got lots of different vehicles now for you to support entrepreneurs who are out there doing this hard work. And if you can support them, it'll help them get there faster uh, and it will help them be smarter about how they get there. You can work for one, you can advocate, and you can really just give them love because uh, we're all out here and we're struggling and we're emerging and this is an emerging field. So it's really important that we get community support to this work because it's, it's tough, tough work. Uh, so I'll end by saying, you know, I'm just at the beginning of my journey. Um, there is a, a long, long road ahead in the small business financing marketplace. And even beyond that, I'm still hoping that I'm, able to, I'm going to be able to go back to Nigeria and solve some, some inefficient market problems there as well. So I'm hoping you guys have, uh, you guys have been um, adequately moved to, to the struggle of the inefficient market entrepreneur, and you're going to help me uh, do something about it. <laughs>